Hi, my name is Lily, and welcome back to the Little Readers Corner. Today we are doing the very long awaited, <laughs> it's finally happening, bookshelf tour. I did one last year, but you never saw it because it was a disaster. But now all of my books have finally been reunited. I had some of them at my parents' house, I had some of them with me, I had some of them in storage. It was a mess, but they're finally all together. I have the shelves of my dreams. If you missed my bookshelf organization video, you should definitely check it out. It was a good time. I put these two massive bookshelves together and they're technically kind of like four bookcases because each of them is two bookcases wide, but I digress. So. Now we are actually going to take a tour of my bookshelves and in this video there are kind of two different parts going on. So the first part is kind of an aesthetic little b-roll look at all of the books and then the second part is me talking about the books, talking about what I've read, about the organization behind me, and just discussing my bookshelves. So whichever part is more up your alley, feel free to jump to that section. First, let's start off with some aesthetic looks at these books.
that we have had a little aesthetic look at all of my books. Let's talk about which of these books I've actually read and what are the books on my shelves. So I'm gonna be doing a little rundown of the books. I'm probably not gonna talk about every single one of the books. I'm just gonna have a little couple mentions and then we'll talk about some stats at the end of the video. But I'm not going to be pulling out every single book and displaying the cover. I'll just be showing off some of my favorites and some of note. So let's look at these books. So first up, I'm going to talk about this shelf that runs all the way along the top. So these are mostly high fantasies, adult fantasies. Some are organized in some categories. These aren't all my favorites. I haven't read all of them, but they are the ones that I kind of wanted to display at the top of my shelf. I have not read The Poppy War, The Jasmine Throne, or The Unbroken, but I have read Rage of Dragons. It is an excellent read if you haven't checked it out yet. I've also read The Book Thief, and I have not read The Wicker King, Project Hail Mary, or A Peculiar Apparel. This one right here is the ones we're meant to find. I decided to take the dust jacket off because it is gorgeous, and that is what I decided to do with these three as well because it just fit the vibe that I was going for. Now let's move on to this collection right here. So there is kind of some organized chaos going on over here. Here I have An Affair of Poisons, which I haven't read. Then I have two Dark Academia books, The Maidens and The Atlas Six. I have read Atlas Six, I have not yet read The Maidens. Then we have a couple Greek god retellings and Greek myth retellings right here. So we have Ariadne, Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters, Gods Behaving Badly, Great Goddesses, and The Song of Achilles. I haven't read any of these yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Then we have A Starless Sea, The Priory of the Orange Tree, Scarlet and Crest from the Lunar Chronicles, Mexican Gothic, Aragon, The Last Night at the Telegraph Club, and Crier's War. These aren't here for any particular reason, they just felt right at the top of my bookshelf and they are all mostly fantasies or simply not contemporaries. I have read The Prior of the Orange Tree, did not really enjoy it. I loved The Lunar Chronicles, I loved Mexican Gothic. Aragon is one of my childhood favorites and I'm really looking forward to reading Last Night at the Telegraph Club. Cryer's War was just about all right. Then we have this little collection right here. So to the left side, we have some science fiction, and then to the right, we have more graphic novel-esque, artsy kind of books. So first off, we have To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, Artemis, Defy the Stars, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, Illuminae and Gemina from the Illuminae Files, and Warcross. I have read half of Artemis. I was enjoying it, but life took a hold of me and I never finished it. I really loved An Absolutely Remarkable Thing and I DNF'd Illuminae. I might unhaul Defy the Stars. And I enjoyed Warcross. Then more towards the right, we have some graphic novels. So we have the March series, which is absolutely phenomenal. You should definitely check it out. And then we have Avatar The Last Airbender The Promise and The Legend of Korra Turf Wars. Then beside that we have Echoes of Thunder, which is an art anthology based off of The Dragon Prince. I loved all of those. Over here we have my Sarah J Maas collection. These are all of the books that I own by her except for uh, I think Catwoman is somewhere in a different section. And you may notice that I am missing a couple random books within the series. I lent out A Court of Thorns and Roses to a friend and never got it back, but that's okay. It's fine. It was the paperback version anyways, so I don't really mind. And I started reading the Throne of Glass series both digitally and lending books from a friend, so I am still gaining all the other books in the series. Then we move down to this little section right here. So here on this side, we have my favorite time travel books. These aren't all of my favorite time travel books, but they are my favorites. And then we have my My Hero Academia collection with my Bakugo and my Izuku. I have read all of these. I used to have a larger collection of My Hero Academia, but it was shared with my roommate Kylie. And since we have moved to different states, the collection had to split up. So I took the latter half of our collection, which is volumes 11 through 20. And then for my time travel books, we have Una Out of Order, 
three copies of This Is How You Lose the Time War and The Future of Another Timeline. I have read all of these. They're all five star. They are absolutely phenomenal. If you want to read any fantastic time travel fiction, these are the ones to go for. Now over here, we have the entire graphic novel collection that I have. So towards this side, we have my three volumes of The Adventure Zone. Then we have my Giant Days collection. I have three hardcover exclusive editions of the first half of the series. And then I have some of the paperbacks. I originally read them all online and I have since been collecting them, but I wait until they are slightly cheaper since it is very expensive to purchase graphic novels. So I currently have volumes one through three and six through eight. So I'm missing quite a few in between and afterwards. And then we have my two paperback volumes of Check Please, Check Please and Check Please Sticks and Scones. I do have the exclusive editions and route and sub point. <laughs> then we have two volumes of Heartstopper. Yes, there is the UK and the US edition. Don't worry about it. Then we have Bloom, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me, The Prince and the Dressmaker, Mooncakes, Pumpkin Heads, and Juliet Takes a Breath. Loved basically all of these. Did not enjoy Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me, but that is life. And then over here, we have my comic slash graphic novel collection. So we have all volumes of Saga. Then we have Paper Girls, Heavy Vinyl, Riot on the Radio, The Avant Garde's Volume 2, and four volumes of Fence, then The Tea Dragon Society. I have read all of these except for Volume 9 of Saga. I plan on rereading it soon. I have not read Paper Girls, and um, I have read the first volume of Avant Garde's, but I simply do not own it yet. Now we are moving on to my kind of favorites shelf. These are my favorite collections that weren't already previously mentioned, but also just the additions I have collected. So we have the Caraval series, we have Crown of Feathers, including the Owlcrate edition, we have the Renegade trilogy, and I also have the paperback over here uh, because my name is in the back of it for a pre-order incentive, which was pretty cool. And we have Heartless, which I loved. Then over here, we have the illustrated -ish edition of Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire, which I got for my birthday and I absolutely love it. And then Black Sun, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And let's not forget the plant, which still needs to be named. Now over here, we have some more favorites. We have Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance, as well as the special edition, lighter edition. And then we have my three UK hardcovers of The City of Brass, The Kingdom of Copper, and The Empire of Gold from the Die of Abad series. Absolutely loved it. I've only read the first one because I have a problem with reading books that I think are my favorites. Then we have all of these editions of Lord of the Rings. I have only read The Fellowship of the Ring, but I specifically collected these older editions because those are the editions I want to read. And then Barnes & Noble came out with these other beautiful editions. I only have The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. I don't have the third one yet. And then we have some more Dark Academia books over here. We have If We Were Villains and The Secret History, as well as the Book of the Month hardcover version. And now we have made it down to the contemporary shelf. So if you watched my aesthetic shots from earlier, you will know that this entire shelf is a rainbow and it contains all of my contemporaries unless they are organized otherwise. I will not go through every single one of these because there are a lot, but I will make a couple mentions along the way. I absolutely loved Again But Better. I went to Christine's signing. These are two different editions, even though you can't tell they have exclusive art underneath and I absolutely love them. I can't wait for Better Together. I loved American Royals, didn't enjoy Majesty, and I have not read Striking Distance yet. I absolutely loved I Think I Love You, fantastic. I have not read Get a Life Chloe Brown yet or The Tourist Attraction. Also haven't read Conventionally Yours yet. Absolutely loved Beach Read and Tweet Cute, also Radio Silence. You'll notice that I also have the UK editions of all of Alice Oseman's work. Just finished Malibu Rising, absolutely loved it. Can't wait to read Jay's Gay Agenda. Absolutely loved Happily Ever Afters. Haven't read How Not to Ask a Boy to Prom. 
loved Well Met, loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and haven't read People We Meet on Vacation. Absolutely loved Juliet Takes a Breath, kind of soft DNF'd late to the party. We'll see what happens there. Loved The Gravity of Us. This is the arc. I wish you all the best is hiding behind here, but I haven't read that one yet. I had to soft dnf well played i'm going to pick it up again but the entire plot is spoiled on the back so i am waiting until i forget that i also have the paperback edition of juliet takes a breath absolutely loved perfect on paper phenomenal book i love it so much daisy jones and the six absolutely loved it loved when dimple met rishi haven't read felix ever after yet the Hate You Give is, of course, phenomenal, and if you haven't read it yet, you definitely should. I loved Fangirl when I read it a couple years ago. Have not read You Had Me at Ola yet. Absolutely loved Honey Girl. Loved You Should See Me in a Crown. Didn't really connect with a Falev story. Currently reading One Last Stop. Loved Lovely War. Loved Red, White, and Royal Blue, especially how politically accurate it was. Kind of enjoyed A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. I enjoyed The Life and Medieval Times of Kit Sweetly, and I did not like Six Angry Girls at all. And lastly, loved Clap When You Land, loved With the Fire on High, absolutely loved The Anthropocene Reviewed. I've already listened to all of it via the podcast and am enjoying the new ones that are in this edition. Have not read Arsenic and Adobo. The Sun is Also a Star was fantastic, and Looking for Alaska is amazing. Now here is my Poetry and Alice Oseman collection. So we have a lot of Courtney Pepernell. They're basically all Courtney Pepernell, except for a Rupee Core and Without Protection down here. I love Courtney Pepernell. I have read almost every single one of her poetry collections. The Road Between is definitely my favorite and Pillow Thoughts are fantastic. I hope you say it was also good. And then my pride and joy, my UK paperbacks of Alice Oseman's work in rainbow order. They're absolutely beautiful. I love them. I have read Radio Silence. I haven't read any of these yet, so I am planning on rereading Radio Silence and reading all of these in a future video. Now we are coming down to some of the childhood books. So I do have a lot, not most, but a lot of the Mortal Instruments series and the Infernal Devices series. This one, The Dark Artifices, uh, Lady Midnight, was only $2 when I bought it, so I went for it. I recently reread the first three in the Moral Instruments series and it was rough, so I have no idea if I will ever actually read all of the ones in the series that I haven't read yet, which are everything after the first three. Then we move over to my Rick Riordan collection. So we have the three books in the Kane Chronicles, then we have two of the books in Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, and then two books in the Trials of Apollo. Moving on over, we have some more Rick Riordan books. We also have this one hiding back here, but I have Percy Jackson and the Olympian series in the newer editions. I have the older editions still at my parents' house. You will notice I am missing the fourth one because I listened to all of them on audiobook and I forgot to get the fourth one physically, but I also have the Barnes Noble exclusive collector's edition, which has art on the inside. And then I have the Heroes of Olympus series, and for some reason, I am missing book number four. I have read all of them. These are from my parents' house from my childhood, and I don't know where the fourth one is, so that's interesting. Then on this side, we have my Margaret Peterson Haddock's collection from the Missing series. You will notice that these first three books which are Sabotage, Caught, and Torn are the beginning, not the first one. The first one isn't there, but they are the second, third, and fourth, I think correctly in that order, perhaps, of the Missing series. Absolutely love that series. Then we have book numbers six, seven, and eight. For some reason, they are currently out of order. I don't know what happened. Um, I just found out, but they changed the covers halfway through. I hate the new covers, and the old covers are beautiful. And then we randomly have the two books that didn't fit in their designated place. We have Blaze Wrath Games and Wench. Blaze Wrath Games is a dragon tournament competition book that is phenomenal, and Wench is a medieval bar wench adventure story, I guess. 
haven't read Wench yet. Speaking of childhood books, we have my entire 39 Clues collection, my pride and joy. I don't know where the first one in the Unstoppable series went, but it is for some reason not here. But I have the first 10 from the initial series and then from the continuation, Cahills vs. Vespers, and then Unstoppable, which is the next series after that. Then I have my Shadow Children series by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Absolutely loved these. I only have two books in the selection series because I read them all digitally and these I found at a used bookstore. We have The Notebook, which I haven't read, but it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Then we have the Doomspell trilogy, which was one of my favorite books when I was younger and I don't even remember what it's about anymore. We have the hardcover of Inkheart, which I also loved, but this isn't my original childhood version because that one was the movie tie-in edition and I hated the cover, but it was a great book. We have the first in The Hunger Games. Where are the other ones? We'll never know. We have Pandemonium, which is the second book in this one series that I don't actually really enjoy. It's just kind of here. You can see I never finished it. Here's my nice little bookmark from I think like eight years ago. The Train to Impossible Places I started for some kind of readathon, I think, and I just didn't really enjoy it. I started The Raven Boys. I will tell you now that it is a soft DNF for me. I don't know if I'll finish it. Jade, if you're watching this, you were never supposed to know that. Olivia Savannah, if you're watching this, you kind of know. I'm sorry. Dragon Warrior, this is an arc. I never actually got to this, so oops. We're gonna go through this section pretty quickly because I'm assuming most people don't care. So we have some mental health, mindfulness, and anxiety books here. We have some calligraphy and journals here, some classics that I enjoyed and read for my English degree. Yes, I have an English degree. Then we have a hiking guide coloring book, then two Lonely Planet um, travel guides, which if I would ever use a travel guide, I guess these are the ones, and I don't know why I have one for one of my home countries and one specifically for Barcelona, which I only was in a couple of days, and then I forgot my travel guide, so there you go. And then all of my language books, because I am learning Spanish and Russian, a good time, these are phenomenal also learned Italian when I visited Italy for a hot second. And then we have some writing books and writing guides over there. I'm also not going to spend a lot of time on these books because I don't care about most of them. I have read Girls of Paper and Fire and enjoyed that pretty thoroughly. I haven't read any of the other ones here except for Strange the Dreamer, which I really did enjoy. I stopped halfway through A Darker Shade of Magic because I read half of it on the plane and never touched it again. It was fine. I did not like The Last Namsara, and I'm, I think, a quarter way through Spin the Dawn, and I just never finished it. Didn't read any of the other ones. Might unhaul some of these. The same goes for this shelf. I haven't read most of these. I have read Passenger, which I enjoyed. It's a time travel story. I haven't read the sequel Wayfarer yet. I started The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Uh, it was fine. I think it'll be an interesting read if I ever feel like getting to it. I kind of never finished All the Stars and Teeth, which is some tea, and I loved the Lunar Chronicles. These are the older cover editions, which are just about fine. And as you can tell, I also don't have the complete series in these covers either, because I also read these um, on ebook. I got about one-third through Carve the Mark for a readathon and never finished it. I read Merciful Crow, went to the author signing event, didn't really enjoy it. Oh, but I have read all of the Ember and the Ashes series except for A Rebrep the Gates, but I own all the other books in the series digitally, so here's the one I haven't read. Now, most people also won't care about this shelf, so I will be quick. These are all of my international affairs books. I'm currently pursuing my master's in international affairs, so I've gained quite a few more books on the topic that I would like to read soon. I also haven't read most of these. These are all books that I got on Book Outlet for pretty cheap. I have started reading A World in Disarray by Richard Haas, 
which is phenomenal. I am reading it on my ebook and then I got it for like $2. Henry Kissinger's World Order, I am very excited for. I started The Color of Law, but I never got around to finishing it. I really want to read post-war, but it's 900 pages and covers all of Europe's history since 1945, so that'll be dense. I have read these three books. They are textbooks for past courses, and I have read Guns, Germs, and Steel, which is phenomenal, but I have not read Collapse yet. I did read The Shortest Way Home, which was fantastic. I read The Displaced, Refugee Writers on Refugee Lives, and I have started The Undocumented Americans, and I've listened to part of the audiobook for The Heart of Buddha's Teaching. I have listened to the audiobook for Amy Poehler's Yes Please. And then we move to the last shelf, which is just kind of um, sad. It's the bottom corner, so we don't have to worry about it. In a fit of distress, I took off all of the dust jackets from these books, similar to the dust jackets that I took off of other books on the top. Here are the leftover dust jackets. They look sad and dejected here, which is really unfortunate. I have to figure out a way to store them without them being damaged because I do enjoy most of them. But here are just these books. You'll notice I do have the US hardcover of The Kingdom of Copper, which I also have in the UK hardcover. Um, this was an accident. I didn't mean to order the US hardcover off of Book Depository. I meant to order the UK. And then I got this one and I was really sad because this is the ugliest book I've ever seen in my entire life. If you've seen the cover, it looks like aliens coming down into the desert, which makes no sense because that has nothing to do with the book. But um, I digress. Then we have this little Funko Pop doll, this jar of buttons and puka shells, and a old New York Times, and then, you know, the book I wrote when I was in my youth, so. Here we go. All right, so let's talk about some stats. So I'm specifically referring to the physical books that I own. I recounted and I have 366 total books. Of these books, I have read 207. 100 of them are unread. 24 of them are DNFs. This includes books that I never finished for personal reasons, they include books that I never finished because I was bored. They include books that I specifically did not read the last 50 pages because I could not mentally do it. And they include books that I am still currently reading. So all of the unfinished books. I thought there would be more. Weird. And then we have the miscellaneous books, which are about 35. So I specifically looked through my shelves and counted all of the books I knew I had read from front to back. Those were the read books. I counted the books that I know I have not opened or started reading. Those were the unread. And then the DNFs, as I just mentioned, were any of the books that I never completely read all of it. And then the, this means that the miscellaneous are just the leftover number because I didn't know how to categorize reference books like language learning books. And then I know that I think I missed some because I only counted these once. I didn't double count them because this already took like 30 minutes just to count them up. So in case you're ever wondering how many of these books I have actually read, you know what? I'm actually impressed with how many I have read out of these. I thought much more would be unread. So you know what, I'm going to take that as a win, especially because I recently bought a lot of new books. And apparently I've read quite a few, so I will take this as a win. If you wanna see how I put these bookshelves together and how I specifically organize them, why I organize them this way, you can check out my bookshelf organization video where I talk about it, I show you what I did, and you can see the chaos that went into putting these all together. So that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found whichever part you ended up watching, if it was both parts, fantastic. But I hope you found whichever part you watched enjoyable. I wanted to make sure that no matter what kind of bookshelf tour videos you enjoy, you found something in this one. If you have any questions about the books that I showed you today, about maybe the ones that I didn't talk about or the ones I talked a lot about, <laughs> let me know down below. Most of the ones I didn't talk about, I either haven't read or just found rather meh and eh, you know. But I do want to say some of the ones that I didn't talk about, I still have read and have enjoyed. <laughs> There's just, 
you know, 360 plus books on these shelves. So if I talk about every single one in detail, um, everyone will leave and we'll all be sad at the end of the day. <laughs> Make sure to like and especially subscribe if you want to know the next time I post a new video. If you want a notification, you can hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I do. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.